Network for a special episode of Iron Debate. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. Glad you can join us on this Thursday night, the 12th day of November in the year 2015. Why do I say special? Seemingly every episode we start with Iron Debate, we say it's a special episode. Well, this one truly is special because the man that we have as a special guest is a man that all of you, RX Muscle Nation, uniformly requested more of. And late, uh, last week, we saw him on the 100th episode of Heavy Muscle TV. And since that point in time, you have all requested more of Jimmy. And that is exactly what we have here for you tonight. So it is our pleasure to welcome inside the RX Muscle Studios for the first time on this show, Jimmy the Iron Bull Pelletti. Now, Jimmy, you obviously have your hot takes on all topics in general and if tonight you get to spit out your topics your rants on the bodybuilding topics that you can look that way oh, the camera. Sorry. you got your own camera how are you new show how does it feel to finally be partaking in the iron debate um i tell you when i came here tonight you know i was driving the car of course i was late but uh, and i was saying that this is gonna be a little different because usually uh, i'm talking about different things hmm. And uh, that, this might be uh, actually a little cleaner for me. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> see how bad it gets. <laughs> we are certainly going to see Jimmy. But I appreciate you having me here. No, absolutely. The, the, the community of RX Muscle in the bodybuilding world demanded that we have more Jimmy. And we figured Dave's idea was, listen, you have your opinions on oh, all Oh, it makes topics. sense to have an old school guy here, right? Absolutely. All right. So with that, we now go to the man they call the technician sitting in Portland, Maine, Chris Aceto. Chris, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Phenomenal. In Guadalajara, Mexico, the man they call boss number two, who also had a starring role in the 100th episode of Heavy Muscle TV, which, by the way, is available on rxmuscle.com and our YouTube channel. The man they call boss number two, John Romano. John, you recently posted a picture on Facebook which practically broke the internet, and now you're having to convince people that you are, in fact, 55 years old. You want to see my driver's license? I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> it's a good thing. It is a good thing. And, of course, joining us here in studio, the man with the final word on all topics, Dave Palumbo. Dave, this was your idea to have Jimmy the Iron Bull, who has been a mainstay on Heavy Muscle TV, to have him on your feature debate show. I'm actually the youngest guy in the panel for the first time <laughs> of my life. <laughs> oh, no, maybe. Yeah, but Sid doesn't count that. He's just the host. But... <laughs> Jimmy's older, John's mm. old, even Rosito's got me beat by a year or two, so uh, it feels good to be the youthful like, guy, although I have the, uh, I feel like Jimmy, I'm like damaged merchandise, I got the, the, the bloody eye, you know, I rubbed my eye and I broke a few blood vessels. See what happens when you get old? Things fall apart, right Jimmy? Huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where do you want me to start? You train with the Iron Bull, you get the horns like the Iron Bull! Huh? You train like a pussy, you look like a pussy! <laughs> All right, I think we're, well, we're, we're revved up, Sid. Earlier today, Dave actually launched his first ever Periscope, and Dave's going to be doing a lot more of that. So if you want to follow him, and if you have Periscope, follow him. Huge 285 today. It started basically as a minute and a half video talking about his eye. And um, I, I guess why, Dave, you want to tell a little bit more about what's going on with your eye right now? Well, you know, I, I rubbed my eye the other day, and I woke I had a broken blood vessel. In the there you thing. go. There it is. And... Um, <laughs> I then uh, did it again, like yesterday, and I came to work, and I had gotten some tooth, I feel like Jimmy, I got my tooth, a dental implant put in, I thought they did it, but my eye was Take fine. Take it and easy. I went to the, the, uh, the eye doctor, and he said, you, you, she's like, you rubbed your eye, so now I can't, now I have to like not touch my eyes, and it's crazy, but. Uh, can I say something? Yes, you can. I read somewhere that that's a very bad sign. Oh, is it? Yeah, that, uh, that blood thing. What is it a bad sign of? I don't know. I didn't is finish the article, but uh, I, I got uh, bored with it. But shit. I mean, it said something. You know, like, I've seen you come in with a couple yeah. of these broken up blood vessel eyes. <laughs> yeah, you see me years. with a lot of shit. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I started. Re yeah, I'm hanging in there. Uh, yeah, I started reading this article about. But you're peeing blood now, though, right? I was pissing blood uh, yesterday, yes. Actually, uh, I was on a job, and, uh, you know, I had to teach. You know, the whole. Whatever, I'm a wreck, whatever. You know. So anyway, I'm standing over the toilet. Well, I was just telling John before, I didn't get to finish my story because you're really coming to fuck off. And I said, I, I was, I'm standing over the bowl and, and I'm holding on the wall like so, you know, because that's the way I pee. I like to lean over the toilet, right? And it's, also, it's red coming out. It's just solid red coming out into the bowl. So I'm looking at the bowl. I'm out in Shelter Island. You know what it is, right, John? Shelter Island? It's in the middle of nowhere. 
So I'm saying, this isn't, I'm dead. I'm going to die over here. No one's going to find me till maybe late tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm finished. You're know? alive, though. And wow. Sid, I made take it. it away. Again, many of you have requested more lifestyle videos from Dave, and we figured why not package them in Periscope videos. So again, if you want to follow Dave on Periscope, it is huge. 285 as we get to our first topic of debate again if you have any questions for jimmy the iron bull you can ask them in the live chat box below the screen and the first question is about the selfie generation or generation selfie in bodybuilding and we're talking about you go to a gym now and what do you see you see people training obviously you have many who are working hard but then you have the legion of people in the gym who are more concerned about getting that perfect picture of themselves in the mirror, in the bathroom, or whatever. And it seems to be more of a distraction now in gyms across the nation. Jimmy, your observations on Generation Selfie. Well, I mean, I've taken pictures in the past, like, but you know, like, like cooking or riding a bike and shit like that. Or, you know, like people took pictures, posted, or whatever. Uh, maybe a couple of shots in the gym, maybe. But the pictures that are out there today, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I try not to go on Facebook too much. But, you know, a, a, a lot of the guys and the women, they're just air shots and, you know, bent over. I mean, some girls are bent all the way over. Like, I'm, I mean, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. It. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, one, two, but picture after picture after. Then there's this one girl. I'm not going to mention her name. I told you about her one time before. And uh, I couldn't take her anymore because everything was, a, a, you know, a, a posing and a bra and a G-string and a high heel standing by the fence, by the pool, by the beach. I'm like, I don't, what the fuck? Does this girl get tired of herself or what? <laughs> I couldn't take so many pictures like that of myself. I mean, I almost threw up. So I deleted her fucking off my Facebook, right? And then she popped up on that muscle lounge shit. I can't, and now she's on a muscle lounge. I can't get her off the, I don't know how to get the fucking muscle lounge shit off my fucking Facebook. I don't know how to, you know what I mean? So I'm stuck with her again. It's like, a, it's, it's disgusting. <laughs> so that's how I feel about it. It's fucking disgusting. So if you keep posing your fucking ass, all right? I don't know what you're trying to tell the public posing your fucking ass. I don't understand it. Here's my ass. Here's my leg. Here's my... All right, what the fuck are we supposed to do with that? What, is a man supposed to sit there and look at your fucking ass? <laughs> Go in the fucking gym, train. Go get a fucking job. So that's my fucking take on selfies, all right? That one is what they call a belfie. So, Chris, we're going to go to you first on this one because... Uh, of all the legion of athletes that you train, this is something that's permeated within IFBB pros, within the top most seasoned competitor. Is this something that you observe and, and you see it as a problem or you just say it's a sign of the times? It's a sign of the times. And, you know, for, for IFBB pros, they're trying to uh, reach out to their fans. And, they're you know, it, it makes sense. They're trying to get a following, enlarge their following, so that if they're hooked up with a supplement company, of course, the supplement company is going to say, you know, how many followers do you have on Instagram? That's the bottom line. It's the Instagramization of, of, of bodybuilding. But it's really, you know, outside of, you know, guys like Kai Green or Phil Heath or Jay or, you know, people who have like a million followers. Every Tom, Dick and Harry uh, wants to be like a self-absorbed Kim Kardashian type and, and you know, poke post up their, you know, their egg whites in the morning, their, you know, their abs at midday, their 30 minutes of cardio, their, their pre- and then the fucking cat, and then they're out in the backyard, then they're in the fucking car, then they got the glasses on, and the glasses off, then they're in the supermarket. Hey, if I was a fucking criminal, I'd know when the fuck you weren't home, because you told me your whole fucking story all fucking day long, I know when to go in your house and rob it, and when to fucking get out, because I can see right. you on Facebook, you're driving home. I think you're too soft, Chris. I think you're too soft. Well, you know what? It's, you're it's, being politically correct, man. You tell it like it is. It's too much. It's out of control. It's fucking bullshit. All right? A girl showing her ass 10,000 fucking times is not going to get her fans. She's going to get perverts looking to stick their tongue in her ass. That's what it's all about. Because the more you stick your ass out there, who do you think is looking at the fucking ass? I mean, let's, let's, let's be real here. How many fucking times I got to look at your ass? That's bodybuilding. Get the fuck out of here. John Romano, what say you? <laughs> Fucking bullshit. I'm serious. I, I think Jimmy I'm needs to get his joke. test level checked because <laughs> anybody's complaining about an ass bent over with a, with a G string on is definitely got low test. 
ass too, bro. But you know, when you look on the fucking thing there, it's the same girl with that ass here and ass there and ass here. You know, it ain't like sexy anymore. It's like, it's nauseating. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, she was that walking down the street and the wind blew and her, her dress picked up slightly and you can see like half a cheek and it looks a little sexy. No, she's got her ass butt out fucking right in front of the camera, bent over with a fucking G-string 10,000 fucking different ways. That's sickening. I don't see the problem with that, Jimmy. I do. It's fucking it's nauseous, man. I don't think there's enough ass uh, bent know, over. I, I, I don't know, man. You know what? Okay. If I want that, I go. Well, I go know, watch a fucking porno movie, and I get at least I get a fucking hard on. Over ass, and I get you. Got to take that to like the gay neighborhood because that makes absolutely no fucking sense right here. Well. And I, I think I think you're I think you've changed a little in your old age because I remember change. You know what, bro? I didn't change. You know what? Because I I'm, I, I, don't, I don't I don't mind going out in a bar and see a woman you know dressed up. I think a woman dressed up, you know, uh, uh, sexy, you know, out in the street or a restaurant like that. And I look at a girl and she's beautiful. She's dressed nice, and I'm like, wow, that's a sexy woman right there. Not some girl almost half fucking ninety percent naked bending over by a pool. And I'm looking at her fucking her little muffin there. What the fuck? Are we, come on. It's, you know, this, and this is bullshit. I don't know what you're complaining about. Uh, you know How what, man? You, you just like that, bro. That? You're all you're fucked up. You just like that. How can you complain about that? How can you complain about a nice ass bent over? How can you complain about it's that? It's the way it's presented, John. It's the way it's presented, okay? It's not enough. It's the way it's presented, man. What, what is enough ass? Listen no, to me, man. It's it's enough? the way it's presented, it's all right? I like ass just like the next guy. Well, I don't know. It depends what so. ass, but, right, so, you know, anyway, I, go ahead. So. Let, let me bring up, let me bring up another angle. into Andrew pause. Well, let me, let me bring up another angle to this. And, I mean, I think now yeah, we're talking do. about we're talking about 90% naked, ass pigs. Well, that's all that's out there. But, <laughs> John, let's go, not. John, let's go back to you on this one. A again, let's take it from the perspective of you see people in the gym now. And it seems as if their intent on going to the gym, more so than getting a good quality workout, is to make sure that they get that one selfie to capture, to tell everybody, hey, I was in the gym, or look at me. Do you see that as a problem or just, again, sign of the times? You yeah, fuck these sign of the times. Who's this? You, John. Oh, me? Yeah. No, well, you know, it, it's, I, I think you're exaggerating. And I think it's, I don't think people are going to the gym with the intention of getting a selfie. I think, you know, it, it's become part of pop culture that we have this device and we have the a means to get it published, you know, right away. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a novelty of the time right now. Yeah, you're and what do they do, in, John? Take we got this device that online. fucking can now, get out Jimmy there, right? to be complaining about there being too much ass out there. Now, I, I, that I have You know, seen. I don't like your fucking tone, I, I John. Are you really starting to fucking know. aggravate me with that bullshit? Don't tell me I don't like fucking do ass. Out, you know, pop a selfie at the end, and I think that's Just a great Just be politically thing. correct. But, you know, yeah, it can be overdone. But like Chris said, right over. you know, these these is, this issue of the selfie generation has been has been monetized by the fact that you have a yeah. certain amount of followers attached to you because you're publishing right. these selfies. Right. So you got to show them the ass. That makes your stock go up. It makes you worth more. Absolutely. To, to supplement companies, to other people that are, you know, want to hire you as a promoter because you have access to tens of thousands of people that the schmuck next to you doesn't have because they're not posting selfies. So uh. there's definitely an economic factor and there's definitely a marketing factor associated with it that just cannot be ignored. You can overdo got. everything. But I think in this case... I think it's a phenomenon that's, you know, landed in pop culture at this point in time, and it's going to take a little while to take its course and settle in, but I, they're not going away. So I, 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 see them, I see them having become part of what has really become a successful marketing model right now. Can I say something, John? No. <laughs> You got all these uh, girls out there flashing their ass, their legs, they're by the pool, but you know, all that bullshit. That picture after picture after picture after picture after picture. It, it, to me, it's fucking sickening. All right? I don't know about you. You, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking about it in perspective, okay? What, how many contracts these fucking people got that are all out there flashing their fucking ass? How many? <coughs> None of them. They're all out there. None they're, of them. They're, they're, I get news. They're all out there on Instagram. Even the ones I never, I never even hear of. And they're contest prep people because they got followers, <laughs> right? You know, they 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 they're they're in shape. They look good. Uh, they get a client, and then they start snapping selfies all day long at shows. With and then next they're showing up with you know me and Jay and me and Phil and here's me and the people I train. 
and then they, they're you know they're they're a self-appointed guru. We're gonna get to that one in a later topic in this show. Let's get a final word, Dave Palumbo. Dave, your thoughts on the selfie generation? And again, John mentioned it as far as supplement owners, supplement companies, the appeal that selfies in general have not taken as far as an athlete that a company looks for. Well, you know, just to make a statement on Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's right in the sense, I, I, it's a little sickening with all the, these girls. I mean, there's girls that have millions of followers just because they lean over and, and they stick their butt out. It, to me, it's nauseating. If guys like it, then that's fine. But my, my, my problem is in the gym. When I see guys that are supposed to be training hardcore and they're on their, they're not even looking at their phones, but they're taking pictures of themselves in the mirror. There's no way you can be focused on what you're doing. Uh, when I go ride my bike every morning, like for whatever, 40 minutes or whatever, I, I don't even look at my phone, obviously, for obvious reasons, I don't want to fall, can crash. But it's so liberating, and it enables you to really focus on the workout. And I think in the gym, guys should be focused on the workout. Get the workout done. Take pictures afterwards. I see guys, the whole workout, taking pictures of themselves. Now, that's not everyone. I can tell you, I see Sadiq Hodzivik in the gym. I don't see that phone come out of his pocket. Uh, this guy trains, you know, but there's a lot of people who don't do that. They're, they're more concerned about putting stuff up on social media while they're at the gym. There's no way you can get a good workout. So to me, it's detracting, and I think, you know, it's, it's just one of many variables as to why people don't look as good as they did years ago. And I'm talking about the hardcore, huge bodybuilders. I'm not talking about the men's physique guys. And, uh, you know, maybe if guys spent more time training and focusing on, on their workout rather than, hmm, this, am I going to get a, good, a couple good shots to put up on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, I, I think that we would see better athletes today. You're watching Iron Debate on RxMuscle.com, brought to you by Results Nutrition and Quest Nutrition. We now move on to our next topic. Now, oh. obviously many of you know Jimmy the Bull and uh, what he has brought to Rx Muscle, but... Before that, his career as a power builder, that's really where he uh, galvanized his reputation and, and essentially earned that nickname. So, Jimmy, we're going to start with you on this one. And the topic is this, as far as your classification, which would be classified as an old school power bodybuilder uh, or power bodybuilder term coined by the late Don Ross. How do you think that generation, your generation, compares to today's modern power bodybuilder? I don't know. Maybe I should shut my fucking mouth because John thinks, uh, I, you know, I don't like ass. So, you know, I, if I start talking about the old days, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, you used yeah. to like ass in the old days. So talk about the old days. You know, in the old days, we didn't have these fucking phones, all right? <laughs> and everybody got contracts, right? We were all working, right? We, nobody was flashing their fucking balls and their fucking ass, all right? He was working, you were working, everybody, we were all, Chris Lucina was even back in the day working, right? <laughs> everybody was working, right? And we didn't even have these motherfucking phones, all right? Everybody, I go out to dinner, I'm at the restaurant, I see fucking six couples down the fucking, uh, on, on the table, right? right? All the women are on the goddamn phone, the husbands are eating by themselves. I'm like, why do you even go out to dinner? Every fucking broad's on the motherfucking phone, and the husbands are eating by themselves. I look at the table, and I'm going, look at this, man. This is the generation we live in? This is fucking ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. That phone is a fucking distraction. That's what it is. It's bullshit. Because when I went in the fucking gym, I trained. I didn't even have a goddamn phone, all right? Well, and I, and I fucking ass. That's, that's not body. Look, if I see a chick, she's taking a, a picture of some training... Or she's, uh, you know, she's training with a partner. All right, hey, but I mean, ass, ass, hey, bend over the ass, hey, 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 the ass, hey, the, the fucking, this is the shots I see in the fucking gym, like this here, that's the, that's, what the fuck is that? That's fucking bodybuilding? That's fucking pornography, you want to be a partner? Go suck dick, go get a job in the fucking, in the fucking Hollywood porno fucking theater. You'll make more fucking money, you'll actually make money. That's my fucking take on that. Now, what the fuck did you just say? That wasn't the question. I swear, I just asked him what the fuck he was saying. He just asked me. Get me all fucking worked up. You know, I had a hard fucking day today, man. Power I lifters. I still play Jimmy like the radio. <laughs> Your generation, the fucking classic generation. I'm going to start fucking flashing my balls on Facebook. When I go to the gym, I'm going to hang my nuts out, and I'm going to do a fucking selfie with my nuts. That's what I'm going to start doing. You get a following. Yeah, I probably will. I probably fuck us the generation we live in. Everybody's fucked in their brains. 
Get a contract. Right. I'll probably follow you. George Farrell say Chris is following Chris, I Jimmy expect that from you. his balls. I definitely did expect that. Go ahead, Sid. What were you asking me? Your generation of power bodybuilders right? against the modern <laughs> era of bodybuilders. What do you think? What do you think of today's modern class? You're talking to me. To your class? Yeah, you're, I'm talking to you. So why are you Just, looking over there if you're talking to me? All right, let me talk to you. All right, your you. era. <laughs> no, you're talking. You're looking over there. over there. Yeah, but I don't know that. I mean, he's talking over I thought he was fucking talking you're to talking somebody. To you're talking to me. Look at me when you talk to me. Jesus your, Christ. Your era. You guys are fucking. You know, I, I don't even know if I could be here anymore. You guys, I'm all fucking twisted up. I'm here fucking 15 minutes. All right. We're all this uh, politically uh, correct bullshit. Fuck you. How's that? <laughs> all right? Your era of power body. My era against. was the best fucking era. That's what it was. <laughs> what do you People went to the gym. They trained. They worked their fucking ass off. They got contracts. They had jobs. This generation's bullshit. What do you think of today's power bodybuilder? What? Today's era of power bodybuilder. <laughs> no, really, man. I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm starting to get fucking no, upset. Okay, okay, okay. You know, it's ridiculous, but, man. But show the video. Okay, so, you know, today the big acts like, like Callie Muscle. What are your thoughts on... I don't even know who the fuck he is. Uh, I, you know, who is he? <laughs> All right. So Put a picture up. Right there on the screen. All right. Yeah, he looks good. What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't a fucking curl. I mean, I, I, all due respect, you know I, I, you know, I don't know who the guy is, but I never did curls like that. To me, that's not a curl. <laughs> if that, is that a curl he was doing? Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I have no so, idea. Some variation of that. Chris, uh, Chris, you know, no disrespect, but you know that to me see, that's see, not a curl. See your so your stance is that unless he's doing like a power curl, he thinks I don't know what he's doing. I used to bring it up all the way to my forehead up to the top of my head. All okay. right, so we talked about the selfie generation, but today in today's selfie social generation? media generation, right? I thought we just talked yeah, about power. No, no, no. Lift. But what I'm saying is, you have a lot of those kind of acts. What you just saw on the screen right there, Cali Muscle and a lot of others right. who who take to their the YouTube channel or their social media channel. Well, if he wants to put his shit on Facebook or whatever he's doing, that's all right. No, but again, you question whether or not that was an actual real curl. My my point is, you I, have a lot I of I didn't think that was a curl, no. But if he wants to toss the weight like that and he wants to put it on Facebook, that's his business. Chris, what do, what, what do you think about today's era of power bodybuilders as compared to the one that Jimmy uh, took place in? Holy shit, Sid. Who's power bodybuilding? I don't know people power... I, I don't know a lot of people, quote, power bodybuilding. Or power or lift, whatever. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? Um, I think if you l listen to the radio show for like five years, you, you, you know my... One of my little pet peeves is that... And Dave can tell you, power bodybuilding, we don't even have people who bench press. We just have people who machine bench press who are good, supposedly good bodybuilders. We have people who, you know, they don't do bent over rows. They do supported, you know, machine bent over rows. They use Smith machines. They don't squat. They use Smith machine squats. I mean, people do nut jobs like Guy Sistanino still do. And I mean, you know, people I know, some of the people I know, Jose Raymond. I Nobody mean, wants to get hurt, Chris. Well, I mean, you know, so that guy you just showed me, whoever he is. I mean, at least yeah, he's, at least he's doing, you know, he's doing something heavy, so he's not afraid, you know, to put out. Well, All right, I mean, so this is, people this is, don't want to do that part, anymore today because they're, 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 they're well. afraid. People are afraid. People have fear of everything. These yeah, they're I mean, right. Everybody's people scared. Everybody's scared. Hurt. People are afraid right, of dieting whatever. hard. People are afraid of, you know, getting tired. People are afraid of low carbs. I mean, People don't even want to cut the fucking lawn for crying out loud. <laughs> when I was so, a kid, I used so, to run around with a fucking so lawnmower. Why do you cut the grass? My father kicked my ass. Previous. Tell everybody's got landscapers. Other than chicks bending over in selfies and blah, 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 blah. John, let me uh, go in two different ways on this one. One, obviously, we're talking about powerlifters, right? And, I, I mean, we're talking about Jose Raymond, talking about guys just, you know. Now, they're obviously trying to build a physique, but let's t keep it to the, the powerlifter, the one who goes in there and they don't care what they look like. They're just looking to heave up the heaviest amount of weights. What is your opinion about what you've seen in this generation compared to the old school generation? You <clears throat> First of all, I think you really need to clarify this term power bodybuilder as in the way Don Ross meant it. Because I was there when he coined it. And I know exactly what he was talking about. And he was talking specifically about Jimmy the Bull. Now, there is only one Jimmy the Bull, and there always was only one Jimmy the Bull. And Jimmy the Bull looked like... Jimmy had an amazing physique on cheeseburgers and hot dogs and, and you know, could bench 800 pounds in a tank top. So, you know... 
there wasn't anybody else like him. Fast forward to today, there's nobody like him today. So, I mean, you get a guy like Johnny Jackson, who was a, it was a certified power lifter and a bodybuilder, but, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a, it's a two-trick pony. He's either in shape for a bodybuilding show or he's breaking records, you know, power lifting. It's not the same thing. Jimmy looked the same every single day. He was always ripped. He had a great physique, and he was cock diesel every freaking day. I remember him in the gym Six, six hundred, six fifty, six seventy five benches, you know, three, four reps in a freaking tank top without even a bench shirt on. Then he put a bench shirt on, and he freaking went up to a thousand pounds. So there there was never anybody like him and there never will be. Or or if there is, few and far between. So power bodybuilder relates specifically to Jimmy the Bull. And and in that in that realm, there isn't anybody. There's nobody today that's as has as has had a, as good a physique with that kind of strength ever. So you can talk about bodybuilders who are strong. They're strong in the off season when they got a lot of you know body fat on. But when they're you know peeled and look you know got abs and look amazing in in it with no shirt on, they're not that strong. So you know Jimmy the Bull was you know a, a solid 800 pound bench presser and ripped. So there was never anybody else like him, and there isn't today. So power bodybuilder, as it relates to, to, to Don Ross's term, was specific to Jimmy the Bull, and there ain't nobody else like Jimmy the Bull. Dave? Yeah, I mean, when you watch Cali Muscle doing those curls, obviously, you know, people think it's impressive because he's got 315 on the bar, but he's moving him, you know, a half an inch. <clears throat> Jimmy would almost hit himself in the head and knock himself unconscious. I think Jimmy's curling prowess was, and I've said this to you before, Jimmy, yeah. was better than any other lift he did. You know, people were impressed with the bench, but he would do full reps. I'd see him do seated dumbbell curls with the 150s for perfect form up to here. He'd bring them up to here. I mean, it was just incredible that, that his that his bicep didn't didn't rupture. I don't know how he did how he did it. And you know, look at if you look at Cali Muscle, he's probably 250. Jimmy weighed 218 when he did this. I, I don't even know how you had the tendon strength to do it. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was just psychosis or great <laughs> genetics or what, but I don't think anyone today would ever have the audacity to do that because psychosis. today where they are bench pressing a thousand pounds with these crazy bench shirts on, I would have to believe that, you know, someone would have to do 2000 pounds to kind of emulate what Jimmy was doing back in the you know 80s and 90s. Jimmy, we, this is a question that we have gotten a lot of, uh, especially earlier today when we, you know, put it out to Excuse our Excuse me a minute. Psychosis? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good. That's a good. <laughs> Go ahead. People Wait, want gotta, to know. I got I to I gotta add to that. The, the fact that Jimmy, this is what, 93, 94, Jimmy got underneath a thousand pounds and unracked it in a freaking single ply shirt. It wasn't, it was 20 or 30 years later before any real power lifter broke the thousand pound barrier. It was because of him that he had enough balls to get under that freaking weight and unrack it. That paved the way for these, you know, uh, uh, guys to legitimately hit a thousand so. pounds plus. Where Ryan Keneally, what eleven thousand seventy or eleven seventy in competition, is 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 phenomenal, and it's all because you had one guy back in the day who had enough balls to see. Let's say I got to use duct tape to hold the freaking plates <laughs> on the end of the bar and, and get under this thing and unrack it. That's the significant aspect of what that meant back then. So. It's these guys today are breaking records that are, are only because of you know we had a guy back then that would actually would get underneath the thousand and unrack it. You know, I feel like I fucking died. And you guys are talking about me. You know, you know can you, ma can you, you imagine? Know, like I'm I already had to feed the wake then? and everything. I'm, I'm fucking gone. With Don, I I would like to see Periscope back then with Romano, <laughs> Jimmy the Bull, and Don Ross. Let me tell you I, something. I, Let me tell you something, Chris. If we had these fucking things back in the day. Okay, <laughs> nobody today with these fucking things would have done the shit that we did back in the day. And I'm talking about a lot of people, not just me. No, there's the three day. crazy. I just listed yeah. three crazy people back in the day. That, that those three between, I can't even imagine just the the audience you could have got. Say we're doing a peri a, a live broadcast. Yeah, we wouldn't be here right now, Chris. You know what my ass would be? Ross, I would have been in Hollywood 15 Ross, fucking years ago I, making movies with fucking Robert De Niro. Paid for this show. Talk about whack pack. Don <laughs> Ross was a, 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 a self-walking 
whack path. John was with me. John was with me at the Arnold when I did fucking, I did, uh, uh, I forget, Hobart Manford came out on the stage. Was that his name? Manford Hobart. Oh, Manford Hobart. I said it back. I got a little <laughs> dementia, right? Whatever. He was a good guy. I liked him anyway. So anyway, this dude came on the stage before me at the Arnold, right? Yeah. And he told uh, uh, that girl, Andre the Blonde, what was her name? Uh, no one knows uh, her. Whatever. Anya Schreiner. That, that's her. Yeah. So, yeah, John was there. Yeah. I so was I, on stage with you. Right. That's, that's, that's why I'm bringing this up. All right. So, uh, Mobot, what's his fucking name? Manfred Holmes. Oh, Manfred, whatever. He had the biggest arms. He yeah, he was huge. He was from Germany. Yeah. The guy was fucking tremendous, dude, right? Anyway, First I'm not... Oiled so, arms. so, before we go to commercial break, uh, Jimmy, this now is I finished my fucking story. Right. I'm, I'm in the middle of the story I'm here. you stopped. <laughs> Go on, please. Is he for real? Go. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> oh, all right. I, I thought they cut me off. No, no, no. Go. So anyway, he went out on the stage, right, John? You remember. And he told the crowd he's going to do dumbbell curls with the 150, right? right? That's my friend Alex right there. He what passed, is this from? He passed away. This was uh, in a, World's Gym. A training video he did. Yeah, yeah it was a good friend of mine. He died on a, on a bike. Anyway, so he comes out there and he takes the dumbbell and he was swinging it sideways like, uh, you know, he was curling it like, like like this, John. Remember, John? He was like going like this and he was in the crowd. Was like what Cali Muscle was just doing. I don't know what the fuck. He was standing there. He took the dumbbell and he was a big dude. He was like six something. And he's just, and he's going, and he's going like this with the fucking 150, right? So, you know, like, like this. I don't know if you can watch. You can see John. He was going like this, right? Yep. Uh, you can't see me anyway, right? The no. fuck am I showing you for? <laughs> so anyway, fly. Yeah, like he was, I don't know, like he was trying to like undo his belt on his fucking pants or something. So so I, anyway, he come back in and I was warming up in the back and then uh, that girl, wait, whatever. Wait, 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 wait. Jimmy was warming up. Jimmy was warming up with two and a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> like 20 <laughs> reps. And I remember I was I was screaming in the back. I was throwing the, the fucking wait, weights down. Stage, he's throwing the shit down and kicking <laughs> these folding <laughs> chairs, and they're flying all over. Shit, and Anya Shriner's on the microphone trying to talk. You know, like, <laughs> there's all this racket going on backstage. Oh, funny. Jimmy the Bull is warming up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real bull in the China I'm shop. telling you, man. That, that's the truth, man. Johnny, what's you wear back in the day? Because I was behind the curtain. The curtains were moving. Chairs were flying. I was curling the fucking two in the corner. I was throwing it down. Right? Talk. And, and the girl's trying to sound like thunder behind the curtains. And the girl's trying to talk. So finally she says, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy Iron Bull's going to come out. And, but for, before that, she came up to me. She asked me. She goes, what are you going to be doing so I can announce it? I said, I'm going to do the 150-pound dumbbell. She goes, you can't. Hobart just did that. I said, listen to me, Andre, Andre, whatever your name is. I said, listen right now. I said, Hobart didn't curl shit. I said, you go out there and you tell that crowd that Jimmy the Bull's coming out there and I'm going to do seated alternate dumbbell curls with 150s. Go out there. And she went out there. She goes, okay. And she told him. She announced it, right? And then that came out. That's where John was there. And I took those pair of 150s and I sat in that chair and I was curling them fucking dumbbells up here like this for fucking reps, right? Did the like fucking, 30 reps. The fucking crowd went fucking ape shit, right? <laughs> So anyway, later on that night, you know, after it was over, you know, I, you know I, I, I was at the restaurant and I saw Hobart across the bar. Of course, I was out drinking. And uh, he looked at me and I looked at him and I didn't know like, if he was going to have an attitude with me or not, you know, because he was like staring me down, right? And all of a sudden, he looks at me and he raised up his mug of beer like this, you know, and I raised my arm like that and then we, you know, we cheered. So it, we, it was cool. What our audience wanted to know about you, Jimmy, obviously, we just talked about you. I fucking I broke. I got to pay child support again. I work my fucking ass off. And if I had these selfie fucking piece of shit phones back in the day, I'd be in fucking Hollywood right now. That's all really, you really got to know. Well, they wanted to know was what was your motivation? What what led you to oh, Dave going coined in it there. before, psychotic. I was just a psychotic fuck. I love training heavy. I love screaming. I love picking up fucking weights and just fucking. You know, I'll never forget it back in the day when I was training Richie Barry at the gym. It was, it was a Rab's uh, American Combat Karate. You might have even known him, right? Yeah. Probably Johnny could get him up. He smashed uh, uh, granite on fire. 17, 18, one inch granite slabs on fire, man. He lit him on fire and he fucking did it on Connie, uh, Johnny Carson, whatever his name is. Sure. Broke all the fucking grass. His gi went on fire. I, yeah, they didn't even want him back. He was going to come back. They said, don't come back, please, because Richie was out of his fucking mind, right? So anyway, 
<laughs> the one day I trained in his gym, this is back in Huntington, it was in a basement, it was under Sam Goody's, it was fucking, Chris Confessori was there, and all, a lot of, a lot of heavy, you know, Quinn used to go there, uh, 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 Gaston who used to train there, right. Freeman McNeil used to train there, Jerry Cooney used to come down there and train there, you know why everybody trained there? Because that fucking place, everybody trained like motherfuckers, alright? Nobody was sitting there taking a picture of their fucking ass, okay? That's why people were training there, even the fucking known athletes. So the first time I trained there, I was fucking in the back, training like a motherfucker. You hear me? And fucking Richie comes walking over, you know me from the hole in the wall. This motherfucker was a black belt ten times over. And he says to me, what's your name? I said, Jimmy the Bull. He goes, I love the way you train. He goes, you don't train. You attack the fucking weights. He goes, here's the key to the gym. The gym is yours. You come anytime you want. Now, this is a guy I didn't even know. And I said, wow. I said, thank you very much. I said, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. He goes, no, nah, man. He goes, you, you take the key. And that's how I started training at Richie's gym. That man gave me the key to his fucking place. All right? Until I went there one night late and I saw some guy doing fucking heroin in the office. And he fucking <laughs> fell. I had to drag him out of the office. He was fucking, he was in convulsions and shit. <laughs> oh, my God. But that was the era. That was the era. On that note, we're going to step aside. When we come back, we talked about the selfie generation. Now we're going to talk about online gurus. It's going to get ugly. And, of course, we're going to talk about the Gold's Gym Venice culture, what it used to be and what it is now. That and a whole lot more. Iron Debate, rxmuscle.com. We'll be right back. Packing 21 <coughs> grams of protein in every scoop. Say hello to banana cream from Quest Nutrition. For seven delicious reasons to love your protein powder, you visit about? questnutrition.com. Who's he talking about? Hey, it's your boy Big Baby Miller here, number one heavyweight prospect in America. National kickboxing K1 and glory superstar. Listen, I'm here to tell you about an awesome product. Number one sponsor athlete with Species Nutrition, and that's my favorite product right here, Isolize Protein. I'm telling you, when your body's feeling hurt and you need a reboost, Isolize is the product to go. I love cinnamon donut, and I'm telling you right now, the best thing I love about this product is easy to mix, on the go, Isolize is the way to go. It's your boy, Big Baby Miller. I'm the baddest mother in America. <laughs> what species are you? potato chip. It's been an evolution. First, they were fried. Then, they were baked. They've even been popped. But nobody's perfected what's on the inside. Until now. Quest Protein Chips. 21 grams of protein and only 5 grams of carbs. Chips aren't what they used to be. This is four-time Miss Olympia Jay Cutler. You're watching RxMuscle.com. Welcome back inside the RxMuscle Studios. Iron Debate here on RxMuscle.com brought to you 
by Results Nutrition and Quest Nutrition. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. Jimmy the Iron Bull in studio with us here tonight. We now go on to our next topic, online gurus. Now, the term guru is one that has been tossed around on this station, and of course, around the entire bodybuilding industry. It is a term that, for those who may wonder what is a guru, we're generally talking about trainers, coaches. Well, now, it's evolved to a point where you have self-proclaimed gurus, gurus who may have never competed in a show, their qualifications may be lacking, but they refer to themselves as either a guru or training coach, and it is a phenomenon that is really starting to take hold on the social media realm. So, Jimmy, all right, let's go to Chris first. We'll go with our resident technician. Your thoughts, Chris, especially you in the capacity that you are with your clients, your thoughts on these fly by night or basically became a guru within a weekend type of gurus that are taking hold of the internet well it's uh it's a way to make money and it's a way to make um easy money because um you know if if i could invent a multi-level marketing scheme for like personal online coaching i would just probably i don't know buy the state of california because Everyone I, I know, you know, and I'm not saying they're not qualified by any means, but I know here's how it works. I help bodybuilder X, X, Y, and Z, three of them. And <clears throat> X helps like 20 people. And of those people he helps, the people he's coaching help like another 20 people. And those people coach other people. It's unbelievable the the, the growth in... <laughs> What used to be like three people were doing maybe 20 years ago. So Let me, let me jump in real quick because I, I wanted to clarify with one point, and, and this is the salient point of this topic, and that is the fact that there is a term bro science, right, and which generally refers to those who may not have the requisite qualifications. They may have learned a couple of things that they read in the blog, and now all of a sudden they're coaches. That phenomenon, your thoughts on that? I mean, it's it's. Look, there's there's no other than Dave's class. I don't know if he gives a diploma, <laughs> but there there's no like you know certification for being a guru. All you need to do is uh, take some selfies and you know get in shape and start you know Facebooking around and Instagramming around and uh, which is really called fishing. And people are going to contact you and they're going to suss you out for your. This is the way it works. How much do you charge? Some guy, you know, with no credentials, he charges two hundred bucks, and then if he has a little success, he charges four hundred bucks, and then if he has a little success from there, you know, that little uh, that his web expands and he has access to more people, and and it grows, and you know, it's really up to the person who's paying for the services to decide for themselves: is this online guru, uh, you know? qualified to help me attain my goals and and you know you until you pay that person and either succeed or fail you wouldn't know john let's go to you on this one again the topic is online gurus and when we talk about online gurus we're not talking about somebody who's set up their business online and is trying to reach their customers that way we're talking about essentially the field of on of training of prep uh, coaching being watered down now by <clears throat> either a lack of information or people who really have a lack of qualifications, but, you know, assert themselves as a guru. Your thoughts on this recent phenomenon, better known as bro science, taking over the online guru scene? Well, you know, back in the day when, you know, before we even really used the word guru that much, it was, it was a, a process of a small group of us, you know, Chris was there, you know, Dave, me, uh, you know, Dan Duchesne was the leader of the pack. Um, there weren't really very many people doing it. And so be, be, it was because we didn't know. There were no, uh, you know, there were no books on this. There were no classes you can take. There were no, there was no continuing education. We had to figure this shit out ourselves. And some of us shared our notes and, you know, some didn't. And all of us who participated were all willing lab rats because the only way we ever learned anything back then was by accident. Uh, or by failure. So uh, that, that gave us, the guys who persevered till today, and people who are sitting on this panel, 
gave us an eye, gave us a feel, gave us a, a, an ability to look at a guy and say, you know, he, he's, he's had enough carbs or he needs more fat or he's doing too much cardio or whatever. We can just tell. You can't do, you can't do that. Today, you can't be an online guru because somebody prepped you, and now all of a sudden you're making meal plans and doing contest prep. You have no eye. You have no season, thirty years worth of experience to say that to develop that feel that you know you can go in there and say, okay, this guy needs this. Stop doing that. Do this, and then let's you know take a look at you tomorrow and see where we're at. You don't have that. So you know the, the self-proclaimed gurus of today relying on bro science. Is really just hit and miss. You 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 may get lucky, you may not. But you know it, it, it's it, it's a it's a phenomenon that grew along with the population because back then there were only a scant few gurus because there weren't that many competitors. Now you've got you know other divisions. You've got bikini, figure, physique, you know classic physique. But you've got like thousands of more participants in this and not enough gurus to go around so yeah you're gonna get you know self-proclaimed gurus out there who are gonna try to you know make their mark on this and it's 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 basically hit and miss so um, you know you just don't have the seasoned you don't have the population of seasoned you know expert out there that's you know capable of, of rendering a good enough opinion to, to help you. Well, John, let me so, take it a step further because I want to get your thought on this too because you did bring up the point as far as the growth of the population of competitors you know, versus the ratio as far as trainers now. Is, is this, in a sense, now a, a dangerous game that the sport is, is playing with where you have so many of these gurus that are coming out of the woodwork that – a real guru, like you, you mentioned, somebody with a good requisite amount of experience, a good eye for this, to the point where, you know what, they're going to be deemed relics or, or almost obsolete because, you know what, somebody came to me, they charged me a very cut rate, and you know what, I, I, I deemed them to be good enough, and there are enough case examples like me. Is this a dangerous thing where the quality of training can drastically be uh, compromised over the course of the few, next few years? Well, it, it could be dangerous depending on what you know drugs these guys are applying. You know, if you get a guy who's you know online recommending a certain course of diuretics or you know uh, you know anti cortisol drugs or whatever, you know, yeah, you could. I think that opens the door for some potential problems. But you know, I, I think for the most part, no. I think for the most part, if they're you know just d dispensing advice on you know what steroids to take and uh, you know how long you should diet. The only danger really is the competitor not coming in on the mark because their guru didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> so um, that's that's the only danger I see. Let's go in studio. Jimmy, your thoughts on the ever-growing phenomenon that is known as bro sign, namely prep coaching or anything to do with the nutritional needs of a competitor being taught by somebody who may not be as qualified and Again, this seems to be a growing phenomenon. Your thoughts on this growing threat of bro science? I have to apologize. Shit. I was fucking with the Y. I really didn't hear what you said. Just go back to the ass bent over. I, no, I, 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 I didn't. I, I By the way, do you know who the do you know who the girl he was talking about that he said? Oh, don't is, say is, the name. The girl who's annoying him. The one girl of all girls. Michelle Lewin. Michelle Lewin. He says Michelle no, Lewin. He on. can't stand looking at. Are you freaking kidding me right now? I know it. Gay. Jimmy, listen. you gotta go get your testosterone. Check. Listen, listen, listen. Now that he mentioned the fucking, that girl's gonna hate my fucking guts. It was a private thing that I had going on with her. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna see her anyway. <laughs> you never know. Unless you but go to Brazil. I, I have to apologize to her, you know. But I, it's just, you know, it's. Look, look, I'm old school, man. You got, you got, you know. I, I got, I got to apologize to the public out there, right? Does she have a beautiful ass? Yes. Do I want to, you know, whatever? Yes, I do. But for me, her husband has got to have rocks in his fucking head because I would never, if my ha if my wife had a body like that, I wouldn't want to be fucking splattering all over the fucking place. This girl got more ass shots. <laughs> I mean, like every picture is. Uh, look, you want to train and, and and do whatever, but I mean, the, the, the ass, the ass, the ass. I mean. Uh, yeah, you got a beautiful ass. What do you want me to do with it? Want me to somebody jerking off now? I mean, I, I, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, how, how many times can I look at somebody's ass? So now that he mentioned the fucking name, 
okay? That was one of the ones that I couldn't take anymore. And I tried to get rid of her, and then she popped up in that fucking muscle lounge shit, whatever the fuck that thing is. All I right. got nothing against her body. I'm not, you know, look, like I said, I'm a man. <laughs> you know, you know my, well, you don't know. You don't know who the fuck I am anyway. You know my past. Yes. <laughs> I've been with a lot of fucking women, <laughs> all right? I, I'm, I'll be the first guy to line up and fucking, uh, you know, whatever. That's why I got syphilis and every other goddamn thing right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are them fucking bitches in the back. Well, anyway, my point is, you know, she is beautiful, but, you know, enough is enough. Come on, please. That's my fucking take, all right? <laughs> all right. Dave, we're going to go to you. You know why I got this fucking attitude, Sid? You know why? I'm going to tell you why I got oh. this attitude. You know why? Because I worked my balls off all my fucking life, Okay. And I think I look, I, I'm of a realist because I've rubbed elbows with a lot of <laughs> fucked up people, had a fucked up life, I did a lot of fucked up things, and I, and I, so I'm not, you know, I'm not into this world that's out there today. You know, to me, it's like, it's not real. You know, it's not. So I, I, I'm like a dinosaur. I should be living in a fucking cave somewhere, you know, <laughs> hunting for my fucking meat, you know? And I did plenty of hunting for fucking meat back in the day, bro. So what was your fucking question? Because uh, it's so fucking hot in here. What do you got, the fucking heat on 90 in this motherfucker? I'm ready to take my fucking shirt off. Maybe I'll show my fucking ass. I didn't wear my G-Street tonight, but you know, next time I come, I'm going to wear, I'm going to shave, I'm going to shave my fucking ass, and I am going to fucking wear a G-String and drop my fucking drawers right here for the fucking fa Facebook world or whatever the fuck you motherfuckers do out there. You know what? Jimmy's got to take a selfie right now when we got to post it on Facebook. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're talking Did about... Did you ask me a question? Yes. What was the fucking we're, question? We're talking fuck about... Question. Get him a selfie. Yeah, give me the, give me the question. Yeah. Give him a phone. Phone, a selfie, you know, question? The well, you know the best selfie just... I've seen? I saw a fucking a video, a short video, right? The, the, the scene was a shot into a bathroom, right? And all you saw in the bathroom was somebody was against the sink behind, kind of behind the wall. So you saw like the long hair and a really nice fucking ass, right? And you're looking into the bathroom on the, on the Facebook, right? Right. And then all of a sudden, within two minutes, the person leans back. It was a fucking dude. Oh. All right? So I laughed my ass off. I thought that was fucking great, man. <laughs> I like shit like that. What do you mean, okay? Uh, you cut me off, man? Well, you probably posted that fucking go. thing, right, John? Just let him go. <laughs> yeah, let him go. All right. <clears throat> Back to online gurus <laughs> and bro science. Dave. You know, when you say guru, I think of a fucking guy like a Muhammad up in the mountains with a fucking beard. You know, I, that, that, that guru shit. Steve Mahalik. Remember him, John? <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. He died. I know. Dave, let's go to you on this one. Again, you being a prep coach, a very... Well, oh, wait, I thought you were asking me the fucking question. You skip right I over me now. I answer it. I wanted to answer okay, the fucking ahead. question. So go ahead. The fucking thing I'm sitting here for, my fucking help. <laughs> All right, let's talk online. Google I'm going to tell you what I think about personal fucking trainers. And I'm talking to you motherfuckers out there. All right, I see you in the gym sometime whenever I do go. I don't go much anymore. All right? And I see you fucking training some fat lady, you know, the poor woman's in there trying to lose weight. Meanwhile, she needs to be on a diet, not fucking lifting fucking weights, all right? And you're behind her, you know, counting, doing your bullshit, wherever you got your fucking bullshit fucking certificate, all right? And you're staring at the broad next to you while the fucking poor woman's trying to bang out a couple of reps that you got way too much fucking weight on the fucking thing, and the lady can't even do it because she's over fucking weight, and she shouldn't even be pulling that kind of fucking weight. You know why? Because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You're a fucking asshole. That's why. Yeah, fuck you. He's back. <laughs> that sums up online gurus. That's what I feel about those motherfuckers, all right? They're all over the place. They're like fucking locusts. Cockroaches, whatever you want to call them. What do you call them, Johnny Cucaracha? <laughs> yeah, that's what you are. Bunch of fucking cucarachas. And Chris knows what the fuck I'm talking about, too. He's over there laughing. He knows. He knows. It was back what in the day when people the actually the fucking Jimmy, actually up. trained, okay? Uh, uh. What yeah. did you say? All right. Oh, I wanted to say, Chris, by the way, you got nice eyelashes. I was noticing before when you were looking down and you were talking about the guru thing for fucking 25 minutes. I almost fell asleep. But I noticed your eyelashes. They were very, they're very nice. You know, I think I'm going to, you need a little Maybelline, but I, you know, you, 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 they're nice. They're nice. That's a compliment. 
All right, Dave, yeah. let's get a final word on this one. Again, you yourself being a prep coach, this is something you have to deal with because you do have a lot of these bro science gurus coming out of the woodwork and now trying to poach your oh. clients. Oh, well, your I'll, thoughts? I'll tell you. You know what? I sometimes have guys come to me and they'll sign up for my coaching services and they'll say, I worked with so-and-so before or so-and-so. And I'll say, well, I always ask my new clients, send me what you've been doing. And they'll send me programs that, that – that other coaches had given them, and it will be a carbon copy, if anyone even knows what a carbon copy is, of what I recommend or what I send out to my clients. In other words, someone took my program, didn't even bother to rewrite it, copied and pasted it into an email, and was using that as a program. When I started to see this, I realized that there are no coaches. No one knows what they're doing. People are just, are, are, are just recycling old programs, giving it to clients, and, and cashing the paycheck. Um, that's not the way to, to get people ready for shows. You're doing a disservice to the industry. So I decided about, about six months ago, eight months ago, to start teaching a class on how to actually be a diet coach called The Secrets to Becoming a Diet Guru. I've held it three times. We're having it again December 12th uh, on a Saturday here at the Arts Muscle Studios. If you want to sign up, there's a couple spots left at DavePalumbo.com. You can sign up. But the bottom line is what I teach people is what the, pr uh, the principles of diet are. Carbs, fats, proteins, how to create diets <coughs> off-season, pre-contest for men, for women, you know, for different populations of people. How to combine that with supplementation. How to combine that responsibly with, with you know, performance-enhancing <coughs> drugs. If people don't have an education in this and you want to call yourself a diet guru, you're a moron. I mean, here I am offering the, the ability to actually be educated in that. If this is what you want to do for a living, and yes, you could make a very good living nowadays in it because, as John pointed out and Chris pointed out, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people competing now, way more than there was 10, 20 years ago. So there is a need for coaches. But you got to educate yourself, and no one out there is teaching you how to do this. Um, that's why I started the class. I wanted to give back. You know, yeah, I'm going to make a few bucks doing it, but you know what? It's a long day. It's a, it's a tiring day for me, but if, at least I know the people leaving this course are responsible and can actually coach people now with some degree of educational background, you know, backing their, their knowledge base. Because uh, if something goes wrong, you will not know how to make the accommodations, how to make the changes if you don't have that educational background. So if you want to be a diet guru, you want to be, you know, educate yourself and the problem with the internet is that you don't know what to believe anyone can put anything on the internet there's great knowledge there's terrible knowledge but if you don't have the science background to weed through what's right and what's not you could be advising poor uh, or, or bad advice as well as you could be giving good advice so educate yourself check out courses like i give i don't think anyone else does anything yet like i'm doing but i would see Go to DavePalumba.com, see what the course schedule is, and, and sign up. It's a one-day class. Believe me, it'll change your life. You're watching Iron Debate on RxMuscle.com. Let's go to our last topic of debate, and this is one that it, it kind of shows, it kind of illustrates the back-then era of bodybuilding and bodybuilders and really what it meant to be in the scene amongst other top bodybuilders and where we are today, and that in particular refers to Gold's Gym, the Gold's Gym in Venice, and what it used to be as far as being a, a center, a quote-unquote mecca of bodybuilding and bodybuilders for those who want to train hard and display themselves amongst the right crowd. That has been a faded era. So, Chris Aceto, we're going to go to you first on this one. In your opinion, why did the Gold's Gym Venice era, the feel, the culture, fade from what it once used to be to today? Well, you have to understand in those days... Um, bodybuilding was smaller and there was of course no internet um, so people did what Arnold did and Lou Frigno did and Bobby Ryan you know all the champions of the day did they came to Gold's in Venice to train and spend some time and walk into the gym and see really John and, and Dave can tell you they you could walk into the gym in those days and you could see physiques that you had no idea who these guys were. They could be from Europe, from Montreal, from from Brazil, uh, from New York, and you'd say, "Wow, I came out here looking to see Haney or Gaspari or Robbie Robinson and Mike Christian, and I see them, but who are these guys? These guys look better, right, John? There's guys in the gym who looked as impressive, <clears throat> if not more, 
than a lot of the pros. I mean, I can remember the day I saw Aaron Baker, you know, when before he was pro. I can remember the I can remember seeing Wheeler before anyone knew who Flex Wheeler was. I think one of the most impressive persons ever in Gold's Gym Venice in a tank top was Jimmy Pletcher's training partner, Jimmy Quinn. Yep. He was freaky. Right. And, and, and people would come from all over, and they would come to find out. And, and Dave was not, you know, there was nobody giving courses. Mm-hmm. So they would come out and try to figure out, you know, how does this all work? And that was the, you know, the... Uh, how the bodybuilding camps that David Zelon eventually had, and then Weida took over and watered down, but uh, how those camps came to to being because there was this natural migration uh, all year round to uh, Gold's Venice, so that uh, from from people from everywhere trying to figure out, you know, how to lift, how to train, how to diet, and then what happened eventually was, uh, you know. A few people established themselves. I think Haney, you know, you know, Mr. Olympia didn't, you know, while he'd go out there in the summertime for a couple of weeks, you know, he didn't feel that it was necessary to, to live there and be there. And then people started getting scattered. And then the Internet came and, I mean, nobody goes there anymore. And then, of course, bodybuilding, bodybuilding uh, expanded and people started coming to Gold's Gym just to get in shape. And then that crowded out, of course, eventually the bodybuilders, and you have really a shell. It's not even a shell of what it used to be. Jimmy can tell you, Dave can tell you, John can tell you, the level of energy in Gold's Gym Venice on any given day or night during that time was like a heavyweight prize fight in Vegas. You could go in there on triple negative no carbs. And have the greatest workout of your life. And that's the way it was. The energy, the buzz would carry you. And it, it's, it's, it, the sad thing is we'll never experience something like that ever again. The exciting thing is uh, all of us are old enough <laughs> to have actually been in that environment. <clears throat> um, and it, but it also skews you too because a lot of people will say these days – I train my ass off or, and you see them and they're like, and you're, well, you know, you really don't. Or someone will say, you got to come to my gym. It's, it's the best. The energy's great. And it's like a graveyard compared to what used to be in those days. So, you know, I mean, a lot of factors have watered it down. Um, the, 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 the sad part really is, is there's no place you can go. And, you know, the closest you probably can go to like a hardcore gym, of course, is Weinberger's, but the energy level, you know, I mean, Weinberger's gym is not 50 feet from the ocean. There's something to be said for that, too. You know what I mean? The ocean gives people, you know what I mean? You get the smell and the vibe and, and the artsiness of Venice, or the in those days, the dangerousness, right, John? Right. Yeah, of yeah. Venice. It all played into this magical time um, where, you know, if I could have stayed there and never aged... <laughs> stay like 23 for life and just yep. go to the gym all day that'd been been good enough for me john let's go to you your recollections of gold's gym in venice and it's in his golden era and your thoughts on how or why it sort of faded to what it is today well you, th- th- there's a few factors to that one is you know back then there was gold's gym and there was world gym and and venice was mecca and if you were a bodybuilder, you made the pilgrimage. And, and, and you just did. I mean, it was what you did. And there was, you know, if you're an artist, you go to Paris. If you're, you know, if you're a, uh, you know, if you're a cook, you go to Italy. But and if you're a bodybuilder, you went to Venice. And that's, that's just what you did. Now, now, I belonged to Gold's Gym when it was on 2nd Street in Santa Monica. And then it moved when, when Tim Kimber, uh, Pete Grumkowski, and, and Ed Connors bought it. And moved it to Hampton, where it is now. Back then, though, it was only one room. Now it's fifty thousand square feet, four giant rooms. But back then, when it was just the one, the one room in the warehouse, there, you go in there any time of the day, any day of the week, and the place was full of bodybuilders, guys in tank tops and shorts, some in flip flops. They were all competitive bodybuilders, and like Chris said, 
from all over the world. You saw physiques in there that you just couldn't imagine existed, and the room was full of them. And there were no, there was nobody else. There was no soccer moms. There was no business executives. There was <laughs> nobody. It was bodybuilders. That's it. Now, there's an economic aspect to that too. How could the gym survive on meatheads? You, you can't do that today. There's, there's an economic factor that gym owners are going to cater to the people who pay. Back then, you had an endless stream of guys trying to sneak in the front saying, hey, you know, trying to get you know, a free membership or not pay to get in. And it was, it, it was just the reality was that you were a bodybuilder, you had to work out, Gold's Gym was the place to do it, that was it. Now, today, you, you don't have former bodybuilders and you know, USA champions and Mr. Universe's own in Gold's Gym. You got a businessman who owns the dollar stores in Texas and he's out to make money. He's not gonna sell memberships to, to, to bodybuilders that have no money. He wants to sell memberships to the, to the soccer moms and the businessmen who aren't gonna go. They're going to get their key tag and then never show up. That's what he wants. So, you know, back then it was serious, hardcore bodybuilding. If you were a bodybuilder, that's where you went. And you, you trained, you walked 50 feet out to the beach, you got a tan the rest of the day, you went back later, you got the other half of your workout in, and, and you could eat at uh, uh, Fresh To Go around the corner or the firehouse or, or, you know, the omelet parlor. And it was tailor-made to bodybuilding. It was the place to go. So today that's gone because, like Chris said, it's watered down. You got guys moved away. Actually, Chris, I think it was when Jay Cutler moved away that, that it, it first started falling apart when people started really migrating away from, from Mecca. And then, you know, they passed 600 gyms with 3 million members and it became this giant phenomenon. And, and then they sold it. They made their money. And, you know, Pete and Ed and, Kim, and Tim, they... They pocketed their millions and they sold it to some, you know, giant company. And now it's a corporate enterprise with bean counters dictating the bottom line. And they're they're not going to cater to bodybuilders. So that's where it's at. It's it's and like Chris said, never, 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 never will that ever come back. And those of us who were lucky enough, and I mean lucky enough, to have been there, when he talks about that energy level. Guys like me would go to there on their day off because we didn't want to miss anything. Yeah. Who knew what was going on there? You got some girl, Laura Vukov, dancing in the <laughs> sets with I know those shredded things. fishnets and a different wig every day. And, you know, Mr. Universe, Mr. America, Mr. Olympia, two, three of Mr. Olympias at one time in there, USA champions, national champions, girls that you rock bodies that you couldn't even freaking imagine today. It was, it was a circus, and it's specific to us. And you got, like Chris said, you could drag your ass in there with one foot hanging off by a thread and end up with the best leg work out of your life because of, you know, what was going on in there. Jimmy, be glad it had, Don't be sad it's over. Be glad it happened. Let's go in studio here. Jimmy, your remembrances of Gold's in Venice in, in its glory era. John. That's where he benched a thousand pounds. John, did you get any nasty emails from Michelle Lewin yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna. Hmm. Anyway, John, I have to agree with you and Chris 100. percent I'm not gonna get into a long, lengthy thing about it though. But I have a couple of things I do want to say. You could slice that pie a million fucking ways. The bottom line is the people you're talking to now, John, Chris. They're never going to know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, you know, that's like you listening to your parents about, you know, when they yeah, lived in New York back in the 1920s. It sounds like old fucking people. Yeah. You, you, they, they, they're you, not gonna, you had, to, you had to see that day Jimmy was there. He's got, he's got, uh, uh, um, who was that black kid who was, who was spotting you? Um, the Eric Mosley. Enormous kid. Eric Mosley. Eric Mosley. Eric Mosley's in, uh, spotting him. He's got the Barbarian Brothers on either side, a bunch of bikers, and, you know, the bench is set up. You got guys filming it. Shit like that happened all the time there. It was just always an event. And, you know, Jimmy, that's, Jimmy marked that place indelibly with a thousand pound bench. And that's, that's there forever in those walls. And you, you got to have a, a you know, J Jimmy had a, an, an impact on that place like a lot of us had. Go on. Uh, 
Yeah, I had I actually had the corporate guys. Uh, they they uh, you know that Dave that phone's fucking annoying the hell out of me. It really is, man. It's t- you telling me to put my shit away? You you fucking beeping every two minutes. Now it's in your ass beeping. Uh, yeah, I had I had the corporate guys come down from uh, goals when I when I was getting ready. You know, after I did that bench, uh, you know the Barbarian Brothers were there. Uh, there was some actors there, uh, but anyway, they, they they actually came down and actually. Came down in suit and ties, and uh, and 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 thanked me for doing the bench there because mm. there's so many Thank people, you. you know, what? Thanked you. They fuck you. They, they they throw you out for trying to go over four hundred now. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. They. Could. What happened was, make a long story short. I, was, I I I told the story before. I was doing a photo shoot. Started on Monday and with you know Don Ross was there and you know and then everybody kept asking me during the week. Yo, yo bull. When are you gonna bench? And I says. You know, probably Friday. That's because I'm going to fly out of L.A. I got to go back to New York. So uh, hundreds and hundreds of people showed up that day, right? What the fuck am I looking at? Oh, go Jim. So, you know, it, it was so crowded that, you know, the, the, the corporate guys came down after they did it. Shook my hand and said, Jim, you know, Jimmy, thank you so much for doing that here. It was, it was like a fucking uh, entertainment, you know? But like I told, <laughs> like I told Chris and John, people ain't going to, you know, they're not going to grasp that shit because they weren't there. They were too, you know, they, maybe a lot of them are too young. And, you know... They're not going to grasp it. But the, the, big, the thing is that, you know, today it's like everything else. You know, families. Uh, John, you can agree. Chris, you can agree. Dave, you can agree. You know, th- as time goes on, uh, people are like uh, separating more and more and more like the Internet now. And I come home, like I used to come home my daughter, I used to, you know, from work. And I say, yeah, Sam, what are you doing? You know, she's on a la- laptop. I can't even talk to her. I'm like, you know. I, I take her out to dinner. She's on the fucking... I'm having dinner by myself. She's on a, Like, a, a, everybody's just spreading the fuck out. It's like, we're losing the commodity. You know, we're losing, uh, you know, to be close to each other. That's what it was back then. Everybody was close. You know, you went right. to the gym. You fed off everybody because everybody was, you know, everybody was doing their thing and together. You know, it's, it's not like that anymore. Everybody's on the internet and, and this and the phones and, the, you know, the, the houses are getting bigger and bigger. People making more money. You got a couple of fucking 15 fucking bedrooms that don't even see each other. I mean, you know, there's no more family values. You got girls spreading their fucking tits and ass on the fucking internet. I mean, everything's just, t- to me, everything's turning to shit. That's, that's my, that's, but that's my opinion. Don't, don't, don't take me for, you know, please don't hold me to it. Don't put me on a cross. That's just my opinion. Do I, do I, can, am I a judge? No, I am not a judge. I'm not God. I'm not going to judge anybody. But I'm just sitting back and I'm looking at the era I came from and I'm seeing where, and probably my parents probably say the same thing. Sure. You know, so as it goes on and on and on. I, I can imagine what the next couple of generations are going to be like. Dave, your thoughts on Gold's Gym Venice, then, now, your fondest remembrances from the Golden Era? Well, I, I got out there late, I think. I know Chris was out there since he was 19. John was older. He was out there also in the probably in the heyday. I saw a, a, a good era, but not maybe the greatest era. I, saw, I was out there in 94 for the first time. And the reason I went out there was because I knew that if I wanted to be something special in bodybuilding, I was going to have to go to Gold's Gym because that's where the magazines were. That's where the photographers were. That's where you got noticed. You know, it was like the old, you know, adage where the, the kid goes to, you know, to California to make it in Hollywood. You know, uh, if, you, if you can't, if you didn't show your face there, if you weren't out there living, you really weren't going to have any coverage. And, and that's why I went there. I hate to say this because I know it's going to reignite Jimmy the Bull again. But the selfies destroyed Venice Gold's culture. That's, you want to know what destroyed the Venice Gold culture? You can do the same things you did out there now online, anywhere in the world. You could be in Timbuktu. Yeah, you don't got to leave your fucking and, room. And you could take pictures and be just as relevant as the guy in Venice Gold's gym. There's no magazines anymore. The magazines have been destroyed. What is there? There's the internet. And the internet is worldwide. Everyone connected. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be a star from your bedroom. There's guys that sit on YouTube and you watch them play video games and they're That's making tons of money. So... I mean, that, that's what happened. The internet destroyed the Venice Gold's culture. Look, the internet is good and bad, right, John? Right, Chris? I mean, it's, it's good and it's bad, you know? I mean, like, look at Arnold, for example, right? I mean, he came over here from uh, Austria. He didn't have a dime. You know, he broke his balls. He, you, know, he, he, he ground, you know, he came from the ground up. I, I, I respect him, you know? So, you know, that, we, 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 I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying people don't train hard today and try to get in shape, and that, they do. But something got lost somewhere along the line. I, you know, I, I don't have my finger quite on it, but something something did get a little lost. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the internet world is a little too much. I don't know. 
I, maybe you know, maybe I'm just getting fucking old and sentimental. I don't know. I don't know what my fucking problem is. Well, you know what? If not for the internet, we wouldn't have this show. You right know, I had, now. when I when I was young, I had to go out and get pussy. <laughs> now I could just sit home and fucking go on the internet. I, I don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's safer. I don't have I have syphilis. I'm the VD. We used to have a segment on Iron Debate called FaceTime, where we would go around the panel and we would basically tell every panelist to give a 30-second, 60-second rant about whatever it is that's fueling them about the bodybuilding world. So what better, Jimmy, than you to have you on Iron Debate? 60 seconds, you want a few seconds to think about what you want to say. We want you to look into the camera and deliver one of your classic rants. You want to do this now? Yes. I thought you were talking about the next show. <laughs> Sorry. Do we have any questions for Jimmy the Bull? We yeah, uh, got any fucking questions? Because I, I need a fucking okay, well, question. We, we do. We do. He uh, needs to be inspired. Okay. To his rants. Somebody wants to know. Um, back in the day, what were some of the side effects you had from taking gear? What were specifically? Was they ask? Do you have bad dreams? Do you have the sweats? Do you have the shakes? What exactly do you remember as your side effects? <laughs> you really want an answer? <laughs> <laughs> you really want to hear my fucking answer? Let's hear it. Somebody's actually asking that question? Yeah, that's serious. I'll tell you what the side effects I had was. I had a fucking hard on like this, and I chased every fucking thing that moved because I was on someone's fucking testosterone. I was out of my fucking mind, and I loved every fucking minute of it. That's <laughs> what the fucking side effect was, okay? I fucked everything. I lifted as much fucking weight as I could. I got as big as I could, and I enjoyed every fucking minute. I don't regret I would never take back a minute of fucking my past. That's the side effect that I had. <laughs> All right, you know, I think that was, we're good. That was a rant. So with that, we are going to sign off for Iron Debate. We're going to have Lou Ferrigno, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, 4 p.m. Monday, correct? 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. Live with Lou Ferrigno, of course, the Lou Ferrigno Classic coming up. So you're going to get a chance to see the legend on Live with Dave Palumbo, rxmuscle.com, Monday at 4 p.m. Special thanks, John Romano, Chris Cicito, Jimmy the Iron Bull Paletcha joining us in the studio tonight for Iron Debate. For Johnny Styles and Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Farouki. Have a good night. <laughs>